What we have here, I'm going to strangle myself. OK. That's, I don't need to go far, far there. All right. So what we have here is uh, we made at uh, Caltech in our power electronics laboratory. I bought the largest tor toroidal. Maybe you can turn off uh, this. Yeah. We bought the largest toroidal core, which was available. It cost about $200 nowadays. And put a bunch of windings that you see here. In fact, we put the eight sets of windings, which are making it four-pole, two-phase system. What is un underneath in the box is the actually, because it's very difficult to get the two-phase and three-phase systems in a building like this. They're usually wired uh, for uh, industrial buildings where you have a heavy power. So you have only the single-phase outlet. So we have underneath here the little scheme that you can use the capacitors to, from a single phase to phase shift another one to get a two-phase system. So we kind of faked it, and we got a two-phase system driving this, these coils. And let's see what is the net result as we put this uh, here we turn on the power, and uh, and I have a variac here. So what I'm doing, I'm bringing slowly voltage. So voltage is now at zero. So I'm increasing the voltage. <coughs> Thing is not connected, of course. <laughs> what do you expect? <coughs> One of the, it's a, it's a. It's true fact. I find it time and again. The people in electronics do that all the time. What we do is in a lab, you go and, and turn, turn your, switch your experiment and then find out it, it has a funny waveforms. And then you say, well, this wasn't doing that yesterday. It was OK. And then you find out you didn't turn on the power supply. It's the same thing. So let's, uh, OK. So what is happening here is I have a number of different rings. And each ring is of a different type of materials. I have some of aluminum. The top one operating at the high speed is one which is made out of aluminum, which is very good conductor. So the induced voltage from the rotating field in this winding create, uh, is faced with a very little resistance. So the current is very large, and therefore the torque or rotating moment is very large. The ones which are moving down at the bottom at a lot slower speed is, in fact, there is one which doesn't move. If, when you see it later, you'll see there is one which doesn't move. That's uh, made out of, out of iron. And iron has a very high resistivity, and therefore very little current is uh, basically generating that winding. Uh, the other ones down there are also made of uh, uh, different types of uh, materials with different conductivity. We couldn't find a copper ring. Of course, a copper ring, ring would uh, move the fastest because its resistance is the lowest. Now, let me show you another effect. Depending on uh, how we apply the voltages, to the two phase windings, we can rotate the field either in a clockwise or in a counterclockwise direction. So what I have here, I have a reversal switch. I can reverse rotation of the field in the other direction. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the voltage to it, and I'm not going to do it at the full power because the transient is so high that it blows up my fuse on a band. <laughs> so I'm going to reverse it. Now let's watch what happens. When I reverse it at some reasonable speed, <laughs> but the good engineer always has a <coughs> spare set of fuse. In fact, I made sure I had about three of them. So, so let's do that again. Of course, you should turn off the first power. So. <laughs> In fact, when we were making this, we turned out that this reversing switch shorted because the transient was so high, so we had to get one with a higher rating than one that we used originally. Okay. Let's try again. Okay. Now, let me ask you another question. Let's first uh, turn it off. 
Now, let me ask you this question. If I do this, I put it outside. Boy, this was bent as we were moving here, so. What is this? This is a Coke can. Painted so you don't, okay. Now, if I turn the power on here, which I did and I'll just move. What do you think is gonna happen to this? It's gonna move or not? It's not inside, you know, the rotating field is here. And this is outside of the toroid. Let's see, uh, let's have a show of hands. How many of you think it's going to turn? How many of you think it's not going to turn? OK, and, and the majority actually had neither opinion, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's, uh, let's see. that. <laughs> so it turns. It's outside of the toroid, right? <laughs> well, it turns here too. But the problem is, it's very difficult to make the... Let me tell you this. It's a mechanical problem. We tried it very hard to make this... Uh, very much symmetrical because it starts rotating and, and very soon it, it's unbalanced and then it, it goes away. We can put it inside. In fact, when you put this inside, it, it rotates about, we measured the speed. I had a little uh, stroboscope and when you put this uh, metal, aluminum mag, this is pretty heavy. When you put it inside, it, it rotates so violently about 1600 RPM. Okay. And then when it starts turning on the side, I don't want to catch it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, let's look at it again here. Well, here is the rotating magnetic field in, in action. This is actually the principle on which all the power is being generated and consumed in, uh, and it's in the same untouched way that uh, Tesla had it. I often wa want to compare some of the inventions like this as uh, the basic inventions that are technology independent because as long as we're going to push the power through the wires, this is the way we're going to use it. It's proven and it's not going to be changed. Of course, if you change it, if you use a microwave and some other wireless system, that's, that's true. If you look at it, other devices and inventions, for example, one that I mentioned with the leader forest, the vacuum uh, uh, tube and a triad, well, at a certain point, it did its function to do the power amplifications. But of course, in 1949, when a Bell Lab in, uh, researchers came up with a transistor, it was capable of doing exactly the same thing, but with a, in a much better, simpler technology. So this is a kind of invention which shows it's technology dependent, something that it was done and then it was replaced or superseded by the newer technology. And who knows, maybe transistors will be here for a while and maybe we'll have optical uh, computer processing and we'll forget all about transistors for 30 years from now. But this is a basic inventions on which the whole uh, power generation and power transmission and power utilization is working. And that's really in the whole concept, everything is really Tesla's idea and he implemented it. And the way he had it originally done, it's the way we use it today. Very little has been changed. Okay, so, well, I have another little demonstration of that, so you can believe me that that's uh, true. This is very heavy. This is a rotor of the standard. This is quarter of a horsepower induction motor. Okay, and again, the same thing. What we've done is we pulled out the rotor of the typical induction motor. And notice what the rotor is. It's just a bunch of iron. And you have here short returns. For other reasons, the short returns are slanted, and that's why the name was called, uh, the name of this is Quirrell Cage. And in fact, I should tell you one interesting fact is at the times of a war of the currents between Edison and uh, Tesla, everyone was calling this induction motor Tesla motor because that was supposed to mean something bad. In fact, it was the, the, the dispute went so, so much that uh, Edison actually hired and uh, had some influence and was able to make sure that the first man who was uh, electrocuted by an electrical chair, they used the AC current. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, it was, uh, it was reported then that the people called uh, someone to kill an electric, by electricity, the electric chair, they called it to Westinghouse. Because Westinghouse is one who supported him at the time. So the, really, the, uh, at the time, they called this a Tesla motor. Of course, now, how do they call this? They call it induction squirrel, squirrel cage induction motor. <laughs> You know, the squirrel cage because it has this slanted, uh, and reason for that is really the, the to get the optimum torque and the best uh, efficiency of the motor. So what we've done is we took this uh, 
rotor out, and of course, since now you have a lot of air gap, your inductance will be much, much reduced. So for the same voltage, you'll have a very high current. So in order to reduce the current, this box here is basically reducing the 110 AC line voltages down to 17 volts. Of course, if you reduce the voltage so little, then your torque goes down by a factor of square of the voltage. So the torque is very little. But that's OK, <coughs> because all we have is little light coke can. So there's a, we can turn the coke can, too. And you see that the torque is very little. <laughs> Basically the same concept. Of course, it's not well uh, balanced, so it hits the winding on the side. Now, there is another fact about the polyphase system, which I didn't elaborate as yet. And that is the fact that if you look at the two-phase system, in a two, what it is here, this is a two-phase system, and this is also the two-phase induction. In fact, yeah, two-phase induction motor. And in a, in a two-phase system, when you look at the product, if you have a load on each of the phases, then if you have a one phase, it will be cosine voltage. And then if you have a load resistance on it, then the instantaneous power <coughs> will be cosine square, because you have a cosine is a voltage, cosine is a current, so product of the two is a cosine square. What is the, the power on the other phase? The other phase, 90 degrees phase shift, will be sine omega t. And the current through the resistive load will be also sine omega t. So what is the product sine square omega t? What is the total instantaneous power? Some of the power going to one phase and the other phase is constant, because you probably remember from a high school, sine square omega t plus cosine square omega t is 1. And, but what is the significance to the power transmission? Significance is that the instantaneous power is constant. That means there is no need for a storage. The power, as it is applied, is it's transmitted to the uh, other side. The same is in a transformer. Transformer is a device which actually stores uh, very little energy, just a little bit required to generate the magnetizing, uh, generate the flux, which is called the magnetizing current. And then uh, most of the input power is directly transferred to output. And what we are able to get with this now is a transmission system that you could take and we'll show on some slides later on, to take the low voltage power with a very rugged device, which is a transformer, transmitted with a large number of turns. In fact, the transformer, you see it here. There's, I can't go there. So why don't I uh, unhook myself? I'm, I'm pretty, uh, yeah, well, OK, sure. So you have here the transformer. Okay, which has a small number of turns on the primary and a large number of turns on the secondary. And the voltage on the secondary is directly proportional to the voltage on the primary times the turns ratio. So if you have a ratio of 1 to 100 between the primary and secondary, voltage on the secondary is 100 times larger. And of course, notice the difference in the wire gauge. Wire gauge on the primary is heavy because it carries the low voltage, high current. Wire on the secondary is very thin because it carries very high voltage and low current. So with a device like the transformer, you're able to convert the voltage from 100, 200 volts to 100 kilovolts, 100,000 volts, and carry that voltage with the very thin wires along the long distances, and then step it down with the same device used in the reverse, putting the high voltage on this side, low voltage on this side, and coming up with a low voltage, high current at the user's end. Now, there is another third advantage of the three-phase system, which is not uh, obvious, and that is, let me just uh, uh, show the waveforms here.